Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first day of this year's PPCS. And today we want to look a little bit more into detail of OpenMP with a special focus on many core architectures. And basically we will present, uh, so in the morning I will start with the architecture of the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor. And after my talk, Christian will show a little bit um, how you can program this with OpenMP4. And in the afternoon session, we will present some tools, uh, especially for um, correctness checking or for, yeah, for correctness checking for shared memory programming. And we will uh, hear a little bit about vectorization capabilities. Okay, so I will start with the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor. And here again, we see this coprocessor and Intel likes this for marketing reason. So I would also call it an accelerator. So it's comparable to a GPU. So but first of all, okay, here's the agenda. So I will start with the motivation and show some, give a brief overview about uh, the architecture itself. Show how it is configured in our environment and then show you the possibilities to program this, this device. And I also will also show how to use uh, bad jobs in our environment and yeah, say something about debugging. Okay, so first of all, what is the motivation for having an Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor? So what we see in HPC is of course still a growing demand for more and more compute power. And in the past, we have seen that one possibility is to, to fulfill this demand is to have something like GPUs. And uh, NVIDIA spent a lot of money and in, uh, invest a lot in, in, in developing CUDA. But CUDA is, well, it's, it's you can use it, it's usable, but sometimes it's very hard to program with, with CUDA. And so one motivation is to having the Intel Xeon Phi, and this Intel Xeon Phi is also a PCI Express card, which you can plug in into a normal host system. But it is based on x86. So you have x86 cores, and you have a lot of them. And this basically means that you um, can use uh, established programming paradigms like OpenMP, MPI, and pthreads on this device. And this is yeah, easier to use compared to, to CUDA. But of course, in GPUs, we also have some, some newer development. So Sandra will present tomorrow OpenACC. This is also a Pragma-based uh, programming paradigm. And it makes it also, yeah, compared to CUDA, easier to program uh, for GPUs. Of course, for, for us as uh, IT center, as, as compu computation center, uh, another motivation is, of course, the performance per watt ratio. So yesterday, those of you who were in the machine uh, room yesterday saw that we have a quite big machine, which costs a lot of money, and every year we spend a lot of money only for the power consumption. And for, for these kind of devices, we have a better performance per watt ratio. And what you can see here in this, in this plot is that um, the Xeon Phi peak is higher compared to a normal CPU peak, but you have to be careful. So one core is, is slower, and one core will never out or won't outperform a core from a normal CPU. And the motivation here is really that this, this curve for the Xeon Phi increases slower, but if you use all the cores, all the threads you have available, you can outperform the performance of the CPU. But this basically means that you need an, an uh, application which is vectorizable, which is um, highly parallelizable, and uh, you really have to use yeah, a good parallelized uh, program. Otherwise, you will never get a good performance out of this device. So what is Xeon Phi? Xeon Phi is like a Formula One car, a sports car. So it can be very fast, and but you have to be careful because you would not drive the car everywhere. So if you have a street like this, it's not a good idea or not the best idea to use a Formula One car. 
And basically, this means the Xeon Phi is not intended to replace the Xeon. You have to choose the right vehicle. Okay, so I'll come to the architecture itself. As I mentioned before, this is a uh, device which you can plug in into the PCI Express bus. Uh, to so in a, in a normal host system, so you have in addition to the normal CPU, you have this Xeon Phi. And this Xeon Phi, you have like 60 cores, so it depends a little bit. Some, some versions have 59, some I think 62, but uh, round about 60 cores. But these cores are limited. So this is our x86 cores, but for example, they only have in-order execution. They have a lower um, single thread performance. And yeah, they are, they are limited, and they also don't have uh, many of the extensions you find in normal CPUs. For example, you don't have Simni AVX. Uh, but anyway, vectorization is important, but it's, it's a different instruction set. And you have to keep this in mind. So the peak performance is uh, around about one teraflop of double precision peak performance. So that's quite a lot for such, such a small uh, card. And, which is also important to mention, you have four hardware threads per core, so so-called hyper threads. So in sum, you can use 240 threads in this device. And many of you know, know the hyper threads from normal Intel CPUs. And for many, many HPC applications, uh, you don't benefit from these hyper threads in normal uh, Xeons or normal CPUs. So normally, if you have 100 or if you have 12 cores and 24 hyper threads, normally you won't use them. This is different for the Xeon Phi. So in order to get a uh, reasonable performance, you have to use at least two threads per core, so at least 120 cores, in order to saturate the pipeline stages. And this is important to know. And what we see in performance normally it, it really depends. If you have a compute-bound kernel, so something like like Linpack, if you have a lot of computation, you can use all 240 threads. If you have something which is more memory limited, it's better to use 120 or 180 uh, threads. But of course, this depends a little bit of uh, on, the uh, on the application, and you have to test it. OK, so we have uh, 8 gigabyte of DDR5 memory in our devices. We also have, I think, two or three with 16 gigabyte of main memory. So compared to a normal host CPU, this is relatively limited. Or it's, uh, yeah. It's only a small amount of memory, but of course this is fast memory, this is because it's this graphical memory, GDDR, GDDR5. Um, you have full coherent L1 and L2 caches, so the I will come to that in a minute and show you the caches. And which is also important to know, you have 512 SIMD bit SIMD vectors. So in sum you have 32 registers. This is also important to know. And Dirk will uh, show you in the afternoon session how you can use these uh, very long vectors. So in comparison to uh, Westmere, so or Westmere nodes, this is four times uh, more. So only have 128 uh, bit SIMD vectors in, in our Westmeres. And in a Sandy Bridge, we have 256 bit SIMD vectors. Okay, here's uh, an overview about the caches and the cores. So the cores are, the caches are organized in a ring network. So we have for each core, we have a private L2, L L1 cache. And what we have, we had, so in, in many slides in the past, you have seen a shared L2 cache for the Xeon Phi. And this is, yeah, this is not really the truth because you have this ring network and Intel uses a special uh, algorithm implemented in hardware to distribute the data from a core to somewhere of these caches. And they do that to avoid that you sa can see non-uniform cache access uh, effects, which would be very hard to program. And basically this means this L2 cache, so does not depend which core access which which part of this L2 cache. You will ha always have a uniform access time to the cache. And um, 
it is also important to know one core can only use a part of this cache. So if you only use one core, which is not, not useful for the Xeon Phi anyway, but if you only would use one core, it could not use a complete cache. It could be, uh, it could al also uh, only use its own part of its kind of private L2 cache. So it really behaves like a private L2 cache. Okay. Okay. So how does a look uh, node look like in our environment? So here's a, a compute node which we have in, in our system, and I think you saw this picture on Monday already. And what you have in this compute node is you have the normal host system. In our case, we have two uh, Xeon cores. So these are sender bridge cores with, with eight cores each, so 16 cores in each system. And each of these systems has, uh, so this is a NUMA node. So we have uh, two, two times 16 gigabyte memory. And you heard yesterday how you can deal with that. So from the programmer's view, you only have one big memory with 32 gigabyte of memory and yes this this is connected with the PCI Express bus so we have two Xeon Phi cards in each system connected with the, with the PCI Express bus and what is important to know now is that you cannot use this memory of the Xeon Phi directly from from a host CPU so you have to explicitly uh, transfer data between the host, CPU host system and the mic system and you also cannot access uh, d uh, data here from this from this Xeon Phi, for example. If you want to use two Xeon Phi's, you have to deal with the data transfers. You can use MPI or some other models. I will present you in a minute. Okay, we only have a small cluster in our environment, so we have nine of these nodes with two coprocessors each. You need special activation if you want to use it here in Aachen. So you just have to write an email to the service desk, and yeah, normally we'll, we'll get you, you will get access for the systems, but you cannot do this by default. Um, in the device itself, so on the device itself, um, it's there's a Linux running, but this is a limited Linux. But what you can do, we have mounted in the home and work directories on the device. You can use all your data uh, as in every node uh, else. What you cannot use is HPC work because it's, it's just not possible. And I have to say it's not, not useful or not it does not make any sense to use HPC work because the I.O. is very slow anyway on the device. So we recommend always to avoid I.O. doing directly on the device because it's very, very slow. Um, yes, as I mentioned, so there's a normal Linux running, but many features are mis missing. This is an embedded Linux. It's not a CentOS or not a Red Hat or something like that. It's, uh, I think it's called BusyBox. Uh, you don't have any modules available on the device. That basically means that you, if you want to use any software there, you have to cross-compile it by yourself and install it there or install it in your home directory. So no, no of the normal modules is available. So what is, is available is the Intel compiler, Intel MPI, and also things like Intel MKL you can use on the device directly, but nothing more, basically. Yes, and we only support, so in the normal cluster with the module system, we support many versions of the compilers and the MPI but um, on, the, on the device itself, uh, we only support one version of the compiler and one version for the MPI. Because we don't have any possibilities to, to manage the systems because we don't have the module system available. Okay. And for, for, so for, for the compiler, you can use the normal default compiler. This is always a supported version. For MPI, you have to load a special mod module which has this uh, postfix mic, so Intel MPI 4.1 mic, which sets, which is basically the same MPI uh, which without this postfix, but sets up some specific environment variables for the uh, to support the Xeon Phi. Okay, how to log into the nodes? So that's yeah, that's the easy part. So first of all, you have to log into a normal front end. 
then you can log into the host system. So you cannot use directly or cannot jump directly to this device. You always have to be on a normal front end first, so for example, cluster or cluster X or whatever. And then you can log into the host system and then you can log in to the host processor, uh, to the, to the coprocessor. And the coprocessor, so we have two in the system, only always have the prefix dash mic0 or dash mic1 to the normal host name. So we have only one front end in our environment. This is cluster phi. And for the for the labs later on, we, we provided some more, but normally you only have this, this one. And if you want to have uh, productive runs, you have to use a batch system. Okay, so this is what this says. You only are allowed to use the mics for development and job preparation, but not for productive runs. The system is, so the cluster phi front end is started every uh, morning at 4 a.m. And the reason for that is that we have to distribute the user accounts to the device and we do this every morning with a cron job. Um, if you want to use MPI uh, interactively, we have a special load balancing wrapper to do that. So you can test your MPI jobs also on the front end and you have to use this MPI exec, and I will come back to that in a minute. And the documentation you find in our doc ITC documentation, which is the new documentation. Okay, how to program this device? So we have different possibilities. Of course, the first is to use the host only, which makes no sense than to having a Xeon Phi. And the next possi possibility is we can use the coprocessor only. So what you have to do to, to that, so you have basically to add a compiler flag, which is dash m mic, and then you do a cross compilation. The cross compilation is also done on the host system, and the only thing you have to do is to use this dash mic, and then you can do whatever you want. So you can start, for example, this foo function could be could have OpenMP. You can also have an MPI application started only on this uh, device. That's possible. Then you can have this symmetric execution. This basically means you start an MPI application on the host and on the Xeon files, or on multiple hosts and multiple Xeon files. That's also possible. Uh, and I will show you how to do that in a minute. And the, f uh, the last possibility is to have a pragma-based model. And this can be, so uh, the first, first time we saw the Intel mic, we could only use Intel LEO. LEO stands for Language Extension for Offload, which is also a Pragma-based model, and this is still working. But since we have the new OpenMP4 standard, we, we don't cover LEO here in this presentation because it's more or less the same. The syntax differs a little bit, but it's nothing special in LEO, and we only cover OpenMP4. And what is done then? For this Pragma-based model, you start your application on the host, so we have the main routine always on the host, and then we have a function foo. And this function foo, there could be something included like Pragma OMP target, and Christian will tell you after my talk how to use it in detail. And then we have a function which is offloaded to the, to the device and execute yeah, whatever you want on this device, and then after executing, coming back to the host, and then you can go on the mic. This could also include MPI processes, so you can also have an offload within an MPI function. This is also possible. And yeah, you can use all these established programming paradigms. Okay, so we I start now with, with uh, some details. Oh, the next slide is about native uh, execution. Um, so again, the instruction set on the CPU and the core processor is similar. Both are x86 but the instruction set is not identical. So it basically means it's not binary compatible. You cannot use the normal binary, copy it over and use it there. You have to use this m this dash m mic flag to have a cross compilation. This is important to understand. But this is easy, the cross compiler works quite good and we don't really have any problems with that. And then you can just log into the device and start it. Um, again, very slow I.O., very poor single thread performance, but you can quickly test how your application behaves on this device and yeah, get a first impression if it's worth the effort to look into it or if you get a good performance here. 
But of course, if you use it, it's only suitable for highly parallelized and scalable codes. Otherwise, you won't get any reasonable performance. Okay, the next model is OpenMP4. Uh, Christian will cover the set uh, in the presentation after this talk, so I don't show any details for now. And the last execution model is uh, systematic execution using MPI on the host and the device, or on multiple hosts and multiple devices. And um, here again, binaries are not compatible. That basically means that the execution environment or the MPI environment expects two binary files. So if you want to use host and mic, you have to provide a main and a main uh, dot uh, mic binary. So two versions of the binaries. And then the MPI runtime will automatically figure out, okay, I'm on, on the mic, I have to use this binary. I'm on the host, I have to use this binary. So you have to compile the code twice, basically. One time with dash m mic, one time without. Of course, programming for this can be very tricky because the course uh, running a different frequency. So in the mic, we only have like one gigahertz uh, frequency, and in the host, we have two up to three or whatever. It's a different frequency, different instruction sets. So the processes will run at a different speed. And this is basically means you have to deal somehow with the load balancing. For example, Risto presented that on Tuesday, having like a, a coordinator worker approach in, uh, for MPI applications. Also important to know is, I told you we have 60 cores on this device. We have to use at least 120 of these uh, hyper threads. So basically this means you should start, uh, you have to start at least, or have to use at least 120 hypercores. And the problem here is that these cores are very small. So it's not a good idea to start 120 processes on this device, or even 60, because this produces too much overhead and the mic might crash or it might not work at all. So what we really have to use is a hybrid uh, ap uh, pr programming paradigm for the device, using MPI and OpenMP at the same time. So it's better I idea to only start like four processes on one device and fill up the rest with OpenMP threads, for example. Okay, here's how it looks uh, in, uh, in our environment. You have to switch the MPI to the special mo module, then SSH is wrapped automatically. And basically what this module does is uh, it enables this environment variables or sets this environment variables, which says I MPI mic enabled, and it sets this postfig.mic. Basically, means it is uh, the, the library expect the main and the main mic binary, or whatever you name your application. On the front end, we have an automatic load balancing, and you can test your MPI applications just by using this dollar MPI exec. Then, with dash np, specify the sum of all processes with dash npm, so number processes mic, you specify how many processes I want to start on the mic, in this case 60, and uh, with dash nph 12, you specify how many processes I want to start on the host system, and then just use this main. Okay. Now I'll show you how to use the uh, LSF systems for productive runs. And basically you have to do everything uh, as, you, as you already know it. So you have to submit a batch stop. And what you have to add to use the Xeon Phi, you have to add this hash bsub dash a phi. This is a parameter. And then you have to specify, in addition to that, uh, which programming paradigm you want to use. So first of all, you can use a native job and then you have to add the special job description. description. So hash b sub jd, and then you specify native. In addition to that, you have to use a special SSH uh, mic wrapper, which basically is an SSH with some generated uh, SSH keys to, to get access to the device. And you don't have to care about the host name or something like that, because this is known by LSF or the wrapper. You just write uh, SSH underscore mic and then your application. This is important. Also important to know here is 
that it really behaves like an SSH. So if you already in a working directory and you log into another node, you also have to to change the working directory between between this uh, uh, yeah between this command. So you have to change the directory when you when you log in or use this wrapper. Okay, the second model is uh, Leo or OpenMP 4.0. So you have to add this job description Leo equals a semicolon b, where a is the number of mics you want to use. So you can use OpenMP with, with multiple or Leo with multiple devices. And b is the number of spreads on the mics you want to start. So for example, you could specify t I want to have two mics with 60 uh, spreads on each of these mics. And then you have to write Leo equals two semicolon sixty, and then you have to start your application as you as you would always do it. So you don't need this wrapper here, of course, because you start the application on the host system and then have an offload somewhere in your code. And the last model is the symmetric execution. You can also submit batch jobs for that. For that. And here the job description description is uh, yeah most complicated. So you have to specify the hosts equals a b, where a is the number of hosts, and here b is now a comma-separated list, which specifies how many processes I want to start on each of these specified hosts. And the same for the mics. So semicolon mics equals c semicolon d. C is the number of mics. D is again a comma-separated list of MPI processes on the mic, and I have an example in a minute. And then you start as you would do it in every batch shop is dollar $MPI exec, dollar flex $MPI batch, and then your application. And here again, the environment expects an a dot out and a dot out dot mic. Okay, here's an example for native job execution. So this is easy. Just write this, add to your normal job, job script this lady native, and then use SSH mic. And here is how you can do it uh, to change the working directory, then you have to specify the number of threads, and then you start your application. So you have also to do that. So it's not, not enough to write somewhere. Yeah, you have just to do it here with 60 threads. You have to use OpenMP threads for 60. So you will always have the mic uh, exclusively, so there are no other users on the mic, which you could, uh, yeah, which could hurt your performance or which you, yeah. So you only you it's guaranteed that you're the only user on this mic. Okay. So here's an example for Leo. So here I use just this job description Leo equals one sixty. Basically means one mic with sixty cores. And then you submit the job as always. Okay. Here's a more interesting part, uh, an MPI example. And here you have to be careful. Normally for an MPI job, you would specify hash bsub dash n2 for the number of processes you want to start in sum. Because of the job description, this parameter is not too important. So it has, but the parameter the two has at least uh, the number of hosts you use. So it must be bigger or equal to the number of hosts you use but it does not specify the number of processes in sum you start. It can, but it does not have to. Um, then you have this job description, and in this case we want to use two hosts with 16 processes each, and four files with 20 processes each. So we have this job description, host equals two, uh, which means the number of hosts we have to use, and then we have this comma separated list. And the length of this list is equal to this two, of course. It basically means on host one we start 16 processes, and on host two we also start 16 processes. But this could be different. And the same for the mic. So in this case we use four mics, and then we have a comma separate list, list with four elements. And in this case we want to start 20 processes on each mic. So we have to specify four times 20. And then we start with the normal. I exit command. Okay, only some some words with debugging and tools. We will hear in the afternoon about uh, performance tools, and we also prepared exercises about performance tools, and also for correctness tools. So we will present the Intel Inspector. Just a comment: Yesterday I presented 
no, on Tuesday I presented the Total View Debugger already, how to use it with MPI and OpenMP. And I was just want to mention here that you also can use the Total View Debugger for uh, the Xeon Phi. So even for offloading uh, or OpenMP 4.0, you can use this debugger uh, and yeah, it's, it's it just works.